What is going on, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here from CLG Lifestyle. Hope you guys are feeling blessed and grateful to be alive because guess what? Some people did not wake up today and some people are not going to go to bed tonight. So that, in my opinion, is a great reason to find an opportunity to be grateful and to just keep pressing forward, keep moving forward, keep becoming so if you've not already subscribed or don't know what clg lifestyle is about clg lifestyle is a lifestyle brand we create digital products services and experiences in the realm of the digital verse and so we are uh, we are about influencing people to love self because we believe that in order for you to become the best version of yourself, you need to know who you are. And you need to know who you are according to God's truth for you. So we believe that God is love. And as a result of you discovering true love, seeking true love, right? In other words, seeking God, seeking God's hopes, plans, and future for your life, desiring the plans of God for your life above all else, because the truth is no one knows you better than God and no one can create a life for you that um that is perfect. And so we here at CLG Lifestyle believe in the power of manifestation. We believe in the power of having, having an active relationship with God. We believe that Jesus Christ is the son of god he is the one whom god had prepared before the foundations of the world to be a savior the lamb of god sacrificed for the sins of the world so that we can become the people the children of god that we were supposed to be before the fall of mankind so to sum it up you know clg lifestyle again is influencing you to love self and we do that in different areas of the human experience some of that being fitness faith in this in this sense right now we're, we're um applying the faith concept right but also fitness fashion food we believe in the power of eating healthy eating uh foods that are nutritional foods that are beneficial for your body to be fully optimized and and working in a state that glorifies god because we believe that the holy spirit lives within us so fitness faith fashion we believe also your presentation and how you show up in the world as a representation of how you see yourself. Now, we know that with everything that exists, there is a perverted, corrupted definition or experience of that. So I'm talking about from a restored mindset, from the mind of Christ. When you are operating in the design of God, God's divine will for your life, you have foundationally, you should have, you know, a sense of purity, a sense of authenticity, a sense of knowing who you are. And as a result, showing up in the world as authentic as possible. From my experience, as you maintain an active relationship with God, you are sustaining your individuality. You are sustaining your peculiarities. And that often is not easy, easily done. And it's not always easily sustained because in a world that is often, um, bum, you know, bombarding people with perceptions and belief systems and mindsets that is antagonistic and adversarial to God's um, will for mankind, you'll find that you will have to be rooted in something, in this case, the spirit of God, who will empower you and imbue you with the ability to stand strong and to be true and to be a representation of his divine love and peculiarities. We are all expressions of the power of God, the mind of God and his ability to infinitely create. And the more we honor these individual qualities, the more we glorify God. So the enemy subtly tries to get people to hate themselves, to undervalue themselves and to see themselves in in every which way but 
being a child of God, a beloved of God, a son or daughter of God, a man or woman of God, a servant of God, God's masterpiece. So on this platform, we are reminding believers and letting unbelievers alike know that there is a God who is creator of all and that he desires for us to prosper not only in our souls, but in our minds, um, in our bodies, in our professions, in our families, in our communities, and to become truthfully unapologetic and uncompromising about who we are when we are truly aligned to the perfect will of God. Because anything outside of that is a malfunctioning entity. And so oftentimes you'll find that this malfunctioning experience shows up in the form of certain mental illnesses, emotional illnesses, um, and other experience that is a direct result of you not being true to who you are. So CLG Lifestyle Influencing You to Love Self is helping you along with the many other men and women of God that God is using to inspire, encourage, and to influence you to become the person that he created for you to be. So that was a lot, but, um, you know, it's important for me to really, um, be clear on, on, you know, on what it is that we do here. So tonight I want to, I'm recording this tonight at a night in at night. So whenever you're going to listen to this, you know, it's going to apply because there is no time in eternity, right? Um, there's no time in the realm of, of eternity. So wherever you're going, wherever, and whenever you're going to hear this, podcast uh it's going to be relevant and should be relevant for what you're going through right now and again god's love for you manifested as him encouraging you supporting you answering your prayers and enlightening you even now maybe you don't even know why you're listening to this but at some point it's all going to click it's all going to make sense so today i was you know i have Part of CLG lifestyle is again the fitness aspect, right? So, when you maintain a, a lifestyle of physical activity consistently, it's going to show up, right? It's going to show up um, not only physically when your body is transformed, but also, you know, fitness or should I say exercise has scientifically shown to. Uh, help and support mental health. It's it's scientifically proven to um, boost your mood and just to create a more positive experience. So oftentimes you'll find that people who are wealthy, literally, that they have a, a schedule. They have, you know, a um, and not all, but for the most part, those whom I've come across in the form of books. Um, videos you know on the uh online whom you know i've discerned is truthfully about that life and are actually doing what they say they are doing oftentimes you'll find that these individuals have a routine they have a schedule they make sure that their love for self is prioritized so you'll find that often successful people wake up really early in the morning to get their um the, you know the things that they want to do they get it out the way first so uh so fitness or should i say exercise you know is something that it doesn't matter what time of day you do it honestly you just have to know what works for you and if you are more productive at night or if you're more productive in the evening or in the morning then you want to do you know the harder stuff when you're most productive so it's about you becoming more self-aware and of course asking god because he knows you best um, to help you, you know, flesh out a plan, a schedule, a routine, so that you can again become the individual that he desired for you to be before the foundations of the world, before you know the enemy came in and did what he did. So definitely put God first in all that you do. Um, all the details, nothing is too small, or God is not, um, you know. Nothing that you can bring to God is, is something that he would, I believe, minimize. You know what I'm saying? So whatever it is, whatever requests, make it known unto God. Um, delight yourself in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. So fitness. So today, um, as I was on my way um, to 
take care of my my interpretation of exercise and fitness, I came across this particular um, road area where they were repairing this this the road, right? So evidently there may have been potholes or some type of reconstruction that needed to be done um, because the, the road that I had often come across was freshly paved. And it looked fresh. It, you can, you know, it looked fresh. It looked like they probably did it maybe like, I don't know, like finished up the same day that I came across it or maybe the day before because it still had that tar pitch smell that is not necessarily pleasant. This is all going to tie in. So I, as I was walking down, you know, walking to my, um, you know, getting to my fitness uh, routine, I noticed the street and I'm like, okay, well, this, this is interesting. Um, cause I've never, you know, all the times that I've passed there, I never saw any type of obvious potholes or destruction that would warrant, um, a restoration or repairs, but that's just my natural eye, right? It could have been, you know, stuff underneath. It could have been, you know, just the standard of the community, then the, the residents saying, you know, okay, well, we want our roads restored every two years, every three years, part of urban planning, um, you know, and, or city, uh, city planning. You know, this is what needs to be done, regardless if you think it deserves it or not. So I don't really know what the, the ultimate result or decision was when it came to um, restoring the road. But nonetheless, the road was restored. And when you're dealing with, you know, um, you know, tar and pitch and stuff like that, there needs to be a time allotted for the road to dry, right? For the pitch to dry so that cars or vehicles and people can, you know, begin to walk and continue their daily routines on this road. So there was redirection or redirected signs, signs that were redirecting people to take different routes, okay? Because they barricaded the roads that parts of the roads or sections of the roads that weren't restored. So as I'm walking, right, I'm, I started to, at first I saw the, the road, right? The repaired road, but then I also started to smell the the scent of pitch or tar and for those of you who know you know i grew up in the islands where um where i've, I've had the opportunity to you know experience some really hard working people who you know they weren't get, necessarily getting paid a lot but their work ethic was just divine and i remember in my house the, you know my grandmother she was a retired nurse and her husband, who was my step grandfather, he would um he was a very social, very friendly, very hospitable individual, and for some reason he knew a lot of people, right? He knew a lot of people, so so um so most of the people that would come to the house would be people who were either close family distant relatives or people who knew him because of a friend that he had or, or someone that he knew. There was some type of connection. And so we have, we would have, you know, certain people at the house. And I remember um, particularly our street, our, we lived on a hilltop. We lived in an area called Marast Hill in Grenada. Any Grenadians living out there right across the street from Westmoreland um, School. We lived, um, that's where we lived. And so that road, and this is why I say road a lot, because that's what we say in the Caribbean. We don't say street. That's an Americanized um, terminology. So I'll go back and forth between a road and street, but understand that I'm using it interchangeably. They mean the same thing. So this particular point in time, they were restoring the road in on Maras Hill, right? And I just remember, you know, these people were just, you know, repairing the roads. And when it was lunchtime or time for a break, we, they would come to the house. Some would bring their own food, some we would feed, whatever. 
And so that's how I became familiar, you know, that's how I'm familiar with, you know, that, that, you know, that aspect of, um, of what I'm talking about. So they, so back to the, so back to the message, right? So they, um, so the, so I started to smell the scent and I'm like, oh, it was kind of like off-putting, right? It was like, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't want to smell this to the point where when I was coming back, I went, I, I took a different direction but just because I just couldn't withstand the, the scent on top of the sun. Okay. So the heat on top of this, the, the, um, the pitch that created a whole different experience because, you know, just the heat, the humidity, it was like stifling. Right. So anyway, so as I'm walking, you know, God began to speak to me about restoration and how oftentimes when, when God is, when he's restoring people, you know, that on the outside, you know, you see, you see beauty, you see, you know, everything looks perfect, but on the inside, he's still working on people. You know, they're not really healed. They're not really whole. And he was saying to me, you know, symbolically, he was like, do you see the road looking fresh and clean? That scent, right? The scent that was, you know, um, existing as a result of the, um, the newly paved road was off-putting and deterring, right? To the point where I wanted to go a whole different direction. And so God was saying to me, you know, when he's restoring people that oftentimes, you know, on the outside, everything looks put together, but internally, right internally now is is the the scent of the pitch road right this is the symbolic representation internally there are still some things that um that is, that has not been resurrected that has not been restored to life that that he's still working on that he's still um desiring for you to acknowledge and to become aware of so that he can help you fix it and so so I wanted to encourage you um, and to let you know, you know, don't let the enemy try to make you feel any type of way. For first of all, scripturally, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So definitely, you know, don't let the enemy try to, you know, condemn you or make you feel bad anytime you may have done something that you know in your heart, you know what I'm saying, was wrong or something God wouldn't be pleased with. Um, and, you know, you don't let that stop you. You don't let that deter you. You don't let that make you feel like all of, all that you've done as far as your progress wasn't worthwhile. You don't make people make you feel like you're anything other than a child of God, blessed, highly favored, beloved servant, masterpiece joint heir with christ jesus in the kingdom of god you continue your 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 process of transformation and restoration there are times where it's not going to be pretty it's never really pretty it's never really beautiful it's always the after and the complete restoration where you can really see right the beauty of what god has done and this is ultimately what god was saying to me he was like Though you can see that the road is newly paved and it's brand new, yet still there was this residual scent or the scent as a result of this newness. And um, and he was like, you know, it can be off-putting, but when the dust settles, right, when it's when everything is truly complete, including the barricades being removed, including, you know, people, drivers, pedestrians being able to walk on that road and drive on that road even if after days and weeks the scent becomes de um increasingly or should i say the scent is less impactful to the point where you don't smell anything anymore don't give up don't stop moving forward don't stop pressing forward towards the mark god knows what he's doing god already prepared 
a place. He already designed a destiny. He already anointed, appointed, and has fulfilled, you know, his, his call for your life. He has already given you the gifts and the talents and the abilities that will sustain his promises, his perfect promises. He's already, he has already equipped you um, and understand that everything that you're going through right now, as ugly as it may seem, as ugly as it may appear, the people, places, and things that you know, you know what I'm saying, is not going to be a part of what God is um, calling you to do in, in the long run. The lessons that you have to learn, the patience that you have to develop, the persevering that needs to, to be cultivated, the, the steadfastness and determination to ultimately get to a point of consistency where now you have a routine. You know, God was saying to me when he had talked to me about consistency, right, or developing a schedule for myself, my, a personal schedule for myself, because, you know, someone who has, if you're someone who, you know, is in a season of acceleration and God is just having you catch up on things, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you drop the ball, whatever, and God is like, this is your season of restoration. All that the enemy killed, stole and destroyed is being restored back to you right now. And, you know, we need, he, he, you know, he has you in a season where you're just doing multiple things and people don't really understand what you're dealing with or what you're, what you're working on or what it takes for you to make everything going back to the road look so pleasant. But in truth, you know what I'm saying? You're really juggling so many things, but you make it look easy, right? And this is all the grace of God and the blessing of God because he would do that for you, right? And so whatever it is that you're dealing with right now, you know, just keep pressing forward, right? God didn't bring you this far just to leave you, okay? People may have abandoned you. You may have dealt with the spirit, as they say, of rejection or the spirit of abandonment, and you feel at times unworthy or you feel alone, especially if you're in a season of isolation where, again, it's a gift when it's used correctly, when you understand what is being done. Isolation is where you transform your life at an accelerated rate. It's where you can block out the noise and you can lock in you know that's that's a terminology terminology that's been being used or a term that's been being used a lot lock in um i believe it's it came came from it derived from the gaming industry um when you begin to lock in glory to god you'll be surprised to know how not only you're able to transform your life but how fast the transformation come about you know and so Everything is not always going to be pretty. And another thing that I learned with my walk is, is um, not being afraid to look stupid, not being afraid to, um, to, to look like an amateur or someone who is unskilled. Because we all got to start from somewhere, especially if you're in the call of God for your life. You have to trust the process. You have to believe that if God brought you to it, he will see you through it. And this is where your confidence comes. And this is why you have to have an active, habitual relationship with God so that you know if there is if the time has come for you to pivot, if the time has come for you to completely leave, let's say, for example, a certain industry, a certain maybe you're in school and you know, you're, you've been pursuing a certain major, but God, for whatever reasons, wants you to switch or, you know, take a certain class, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't make sense, even according to the curriculum or the majors, um, uh, the requirements for your major. You know, you have to be obedient to God. You should be obedient to God because he knows best. So I so the the symbolism of the road, of the story of the road is to keep pressing forward you know what people see on the outside um is what they see but god knows the heart okay and although you know you know whatever season that you're in right now you know you may be leaving some residual some residuals that are unpleasant right but ultimately god knows your heart and ultimately and i've experienced this with 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 people who for whatever reasons, God, you know, co-signed them and he, let me 
I think I should talk about it a little bit. So I remember God um, defending someone who who was associated with another individual simply because they just had to work together, right? Um, it, it, it was part of the job. And though these two individuals were in the in the industry of let's just say helping others one of them was you know really not a good representation of the ideals when it comes to christianity or what people believe to be you know a child of god who is truly living the way that god wants them to live and i say that just to give you some context right the other one the other person and they were also um you you can't you couldn't really tell who they were or what they were about simply because they didn't really show their personalities like that so basically you were judging them based off of association right and so the word talks about you know well there's a saying that says birds have a feather flock together and this is why it's important for you to consider your company and to consider those whom you spend your time with because they are a representation or they will be a representation of who you are so anyways so god so maybe in my mind you know i'm just like well you appear to be this person but if this is you know an individual that you know is doing wrong that you know is not doing the right thing and you're associating with them then that makes you, you know, a co-signer of the evils that is going on. And so I remember towards the end of my, my assignment in that situation, God had me encounter another individual whom, who, so I'll say this. So I was doing a um, lift for a bit and I, the, the passenger that I picked up happened to be at this point happened to be a pastor right and so we were talking about we just happened to talk about life and experiences and christ and stuff like that you know anytime i anytime i encounter someone who you know lives for god and and you know loves the lord you know we let's let's talk about it that's one of the that's one of the main things if not the number one thing that will get me to engage in any type of extended conversation uh, with a person at this point in my life is is their experience with the Lord and you know what their plans are as far as establishing God's kingdom. So we were talking about um, we were talking about you know a lot of things, but it just so happened that this individual that I'm referring to came up, and you know the passenger was talking about you know just good was saying good things about this individual. And it was just so random and kind of like obviously not coincidental when you think about how God works, that God was now defending and co-signing this individual, right? Remember, as I said before, when you when you look on the outside, right, you saw these two people together and you're like, well, even though one is evidently evil, right, for lack of better words, the other one, even though we don't really know what's going on with them as far as what they're about, just their association. You just tie them in as one. So you're saying, you know, you would say, okay, well, we don't know what's going on with them, but she's also not saying anything. So clearly, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're evil too, but this was so powerful and it was so encouraging and inspiring, you know, because at the end of the day, we serve a God who is peace, the King of peace, right? And oftentimes we live in a world where people want you to always say things and do things that um, that's, that isn't always the right thing to do. It's not always the right time. And it's also sometimes not according to the will of God. So God had this individual just begin to speak so profoundly and so um so supportingly and, and and kindly about this individual who again you know in my mind i never really there wasn't anything bad that i discerned about the individual it was just that i just couldn't understand you know where was the commonality and why was this relationship so budding especially considering the other individual who you know, from my discernment was someone who, um, 
you know, it wasn't a good representation of what what I believe the kingdom of God is and, and the citizens of the kingdom. Now, I wasn't saying this from a place of judgment. It was just my decision, my my assessment of the situation. And as a result of this assessment, it was now a decision that I needed to make if I wanted to be a part of this organization or if I wanted to be a part of th that whole experience. So that's what that was about. And with anything in life, we have to make decisions. We have to assess situations and to make a decision to say, okay, is this something that I want to be a part of or not? Right. So that's what that was. But anyways, so God had this, had set up this encounter and you'll be surprised to know, you know, when you're doing something that you never thought you would do, understanding the long run sometimes is God's leadership because why you've put him first and you, you decided to trust in him. And he's leading you to have an encounter with someone or something or an experience. And once that thing has happened, that's it. You're on to something else. So just trust the process. But anyways, so he, the, the individual began to speak so highly and so great about this individual, which was, again, so interesting, but it was also encouraging and just a reminder of how faithful God is. Because oftentimes you want to, especially when it comes to reputation in certain industries, it's very important to have a good reputation. And so oftentimes when people are slandering you or lying about you or saying things that are not true, you're thinking, wow, like how do you defend yourself in that in this case? And oftentimes people will, you know, relieve themselves of God given opportunities because of the slander, because of the lies, because of the furnace. I think about the Hebrew boys in the furnace, right? Their unwillingness to compromise their integrity and their faith caused them to be thrown into the furnace, which is a sign of, which is, can be symbolic of oppression and severe bullying so that they would eventually succumb and then mold themselves into the identity and into the culture that was prevalent at the time, which God was using these boys to change. So clearly, you know, just like King David, you know, all of God's people have gone through seasons and seasons and seasons of, um, of intimacy with God and just discovering who they are. I think of Moses, Moses, Moses had to when he fled from Egypt, he had seasons upon seasons of just cultivating his relationship with God and becoming this individual that was now prepared to face Pharaoh. So just be mindful of that, right? God um, God knows what he's doing. So anyways, so it was so encouraging because we all have gone through that. We have all gone through, and the word talks about, you know, blessed are you, you know, for you being persecuted because you believe in Christ Jesus. So the word already reveals that these things are going to happen. And it's just a tactic of the enemy to get you to cow down, to get you to turn away from the faith, to get you to backslide, to get you to not say the name of Jesus and to and not acknowledge the King of Kings. And so the word already reveals that this is, is going to happen. But for those who know they, their God, amen, I feel the anointing. For those who know their God, let me pull up the scripture. For those who know their God, amen, shall what? The people that know their God shall be strong, amen. And this is from the book of Daniel, and do exploits. So when you encounter these individuals and these experiences that are meant to break you down, that are meant to have you compromise your values and integrity, that are meant to make you question who you are in the eyes of the Father. But you stand still and you be still and you wait on the hand of God to move on your behalf. And as Daniel 11.32 says, the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. God is going to defend your cause. He is going to be your advocate. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. He is going to speak into the ears of people who question your integrity. He is going to expose, okay, the lies of the enemy. He's going to expose the liars and the deceivers and those whom have allowed the enemies 
the enemies, the enemies of God, as in the, the, the adversary, the devil, the demonic entities who are working against the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God is going to expose those people, places and things for who they are in the eyes of those who matter. It's very important for you to understand that not everyone ma everyone matters, okay? Everyone does not matter, okay? I know there's a slogans out there that talks about whatever, whatever matters. Everyone does not matter because when you are committed to doing evil, when you're committing to destroying the good works of God, when you're committing, committed to making people's lives a living hell, you don't matter. Okay, and it's only a matter of time before your judgment and the due and just judgment that is due upon you is handed to you, especially when you know better and you need to be doing better and you choose not to. The word talks about being left to a reprobate mind. Okay, and oftentimes when you see people dealing with severe issues, whether emotionally, mentally, spiritually, understand that it's not always poor and, and, and you know, poor you or poor them. Oftentimes, is the results and the fruits of their wickedness, okay? So, God will defend your cause in the eyes and in the ears of those who matter. And it was such a loving representation, like many things God do, of God and how faithful he is to his servants, how faithful he is to those who have really committed uh, to living a life that is holy and pleasing unto him. Even though on the outside, right, even though you may have residuals of quote unquote ugliness, God is doing a work in you. And at the end of the day, the opinions of people does not matter. Only God's truth shall be sustained. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall remain. And his word concerning you, his word concerning who he has called you to be, his word concerning the hopes, plans and future that he has for your life shall not perish it shall last it shall be sustained okay i believe it's the book of in the book of um what is these this book isaiah talks about you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that has risen up against you thou shalt condemn and show to be in the wrong this is the inheritance of the saints amen so this is God's word again, God's word revealing to you his love, his faithfulness, his loyalty. Come on, God's loyalty towards his people. We live in a world where we look for loyalty and love in all the wrong places, but there's no one more loyal and more loving and more generous and more kind and more protective than the spirit of God. And once we've experienced that in our lives, then now we can allocate that. Then now we can serve that to those whom God has called us to serve because not everyone matters. Not everyone matters in the kingdom of God. Yes, it is not God's will that people perish. But at the end of the day, when you've been given the opportunity to receive grace and to receive salvation and you turn it down, you no longer matter. You are now left to the devices of your decision which according to the word is death and eternal damnation. So be it unto you. But for those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And you are listening to this podcast because you are, I believe, someone whom God has, as the word says, chosen before the foundation of the world and has called you according to his perfect promises. So though you may have gone through certain things, though the devil have you know, dragged you through the mud, right? And you're like, wow, me? Yes, you. God chose you. We can look at the Bible at some of the most egregious crimes done by God's people, yet still he was faithful. And they didn't go without suffering consequences for their decisions. But God knows our hearts. And oftentimes we are the manifestations of our environments. We didn't know better, so we did, didn't do better. Okay, And so there's grace in that in that area, there's opportunity for you to change and to become better right in that area. Because when you know better, you can do better. And God knows all hearts. And so you've been given an opportunity to do life again, to reinvent yourself, to do the works that need to be done so that you can receive your complete restoration. And it's not complete until the dust settles. Okay. So 
though there are certain aspects of your life that looks beautiful, you know what I'm saying? The ashes have been turned to beauty, yet still there's other parts in you that needs to get work done. It still doesn't take away from the beauty that's already represented as a result of the Spirit of God living in you. So be grateful for that. Honor that. Appreciate it. Give thanks for it because beauty is beauty. They say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, but God's beauty is a whole different thing. You know, it's when God has beautified you, when he has anointed you, when when his spirit, um, <clears throat> when his spirit has, you know, you know, just beautified you, right? He's, he's turned your ashes into beauty. Um, it's just a whole different experience and it defies beauty standards. It defies worldly standards in the world. You know, whether you're from Africa, as far as a continent or Europe or Asia, Asia or the Americas, there are standards of beauty that these people, that these nations and these cultures adhere to. And if you don't fit those standards, then you are considered unattractive. But in the kingdom of God or in the eyes of God, God loves variety. God loves uh, peculiarities and uniqueness. And this is why no two fingerprints are alike. And this is why even though you may have triplets and quadruplets and, you know, all of these sextuplets, they're still different. Okay. There's still some unique traits and, and qualities, even though they're identical, that um that you can recognize and discern that makes them an individual. And that is the power of God. That's the infinite ability of God to create. So you um you the more you understand that, the more you embrace your uniqueness, the more you are resistant to you know compromising who you are. Uh, the more you you stand strong in the power of just being you, the you God created, the more you are no nonsense when it comes to people, places, and things that you discern are trying to get you out of character or trying to get you to um, to be someone that you're not. Um, the more you have zero tolerance for people who have, you know, just that energy that you know is demonic, that you know it's not from a good place. Um and you just resist it because the word talks about resisting the enemy so that he flees from you. Okay. And let God be true and every man a liar. So in your season of restoration, you know, there are aspects of you that still needs work. Um, but it doesn't take away from what's already done and what God has already restored. So going back to the symbolism of the road, beautifully paved road, you know, spotless, clean, without a hole or ditch. Yet still, the residuals of that the the the, the scent of the, the pitch and the tar was still there, but it is guaranteed to dissipate. It is guaranteed to dissolve. It is guaranteed to go away, right, and to never return. Okay, so think about that in every area of your life, right? Anything that is not of God or that God doesn't want to be a part of your life, um, trust that He is doing a work in you and that he's going to do it to completion. He who started a thing in you is going to see to completion. He's a guardian and he's a, the author and finisher of our faith. He's a guardian of our souls and he knows the best. So with that being said, beautiful people, that's, we're going to close it up um, for tonight. Thank you so much for supporting. I am Corwin L. Gilliams. I appreciate you. And I look forward to speaking with you guys very soon. Don't forget to like, share, and uh, subscribe, and to support the platform because great things are going on around here. And we give God all the glory because he's worthy and he's faithful and he is who he is, God, and he deserves all the glory. So with that being said, uh, thank you and have a blessed night in Jesus' name. Amen.